it doesn't need to reinvent the wheel to make serious money. It just has to solve a problem people actually have and to do it well. I'm just trying to figure it out what worked for other people. So as usual, I just scroll through X because there are a lot of indie makers that are sharing their progress with their applications or I'm just opening the app store to see what apps are in trending. So if someone made some hundred bucks with an app, I will check it out. But if they are making good money with that app, like a couple of thousands of dollars, I'm considering to build something like that too. Honestly, at this point, originality is dead. Almost everything has been done or already implemented in some way. The real advantage comes from seeing what works and executing it better. After looking through hundreds of apps, some patterns started to appear. Certain niches keep showing up and certain apps keep making a whole lot of money. So in this video, I want to share with you the best three niches in which you can build apps right now. I picked these three niches because they are proven that are making money, they are popular and there is still space for new apps too. So moving on to the first niche which are the utility apps. Utility apps are one of the most reliable categories. They are not flashy or cool looking but people are using them every single day and that's what matters. These are apps that solve small but consistent problems like cleaning your camera roll, signing documents, scanning documents, managing storage and stuff like that. It doesn't need to reinvent the wheel to make serious money. It just has to solve a problem people actually have and to do it well. Let's take Swipe Wipe as an example. It's a pretty simple app that helps you to declutter your camera roll by swiping. It also helps you to remove duplicate photos and to also delete videos from your phone. So the main pain point that solves is to save your space, right? Okay, so this simple app idea has generated over $1 million in the last month. It works because it solves a problem that most of us have, running out of space and we want to declutter the camera roll much faster and their solution to that was by swiping and their approach is fast and intuitive and it's more fun to do and that's why utility apps work you can take a slow and boring task and make it more fun fast and easier to do another thing about utility apps is that they are repeatable because these problems will still occur after some time let's say that you declutter your camera roll right now but maybe in a couple of weeks or days you will need to declutter it again that's why these apps stick into daily routines but before moving into the next niche a quick word from our today's video sponsor cold rabbit honestly pull requests suck let's just say but here is where cold rabbit comes to help this ai code review tool completely changed the game, it actually makes PRs not suck. The second you push a commit, CodeRabbit is on the job. You get instant actionable feedback, clear summaries of changes, true walkthroughs, and tiny, perfect line-by-line -line suggestions you can improve in just one click. It keeps the whole review loop incredibly clean, fast, and painless. The real power move, you can talk to the AI right inside your pull request, ask for clarification on complex logic, get deeper explanations on why why it suggested a change or even brainstorm better architectural ideas. It understands the full context, acting like an expert engineering partner who kills confusion and those dreaded review headaches. Plus, they give you a CLI tool that feels like a secret weapon. It lets you run the full code rabbit review locally before you even open a PR. You catch the easy, embarrassing dumb stuff before anyone else sees it. If you're ready to stop stressing over feedback and start shipping cleaner code faster, you need to check out code rabbit using the link in the description thanks to cold rabbit for sponsoring today's video okay so the next niche is education and this has a massive demand people are always trying to learn something new and using your phone to do that it makes the process much easier duolingo is the most obvious example in the last month they generated over 41 million us dollars into app store sales just by teaching languages but you don't need to build that kind of scale to build a successful app smaller focused apps on one topic are working too. Like a flashcard app for students or a micro learning for a specific skill or even using AI to summarize things and help people understand them better. Education apps succeed because the progress is measurable. Besides that gamification with streaks, daily habits and achievements, people love seeing results and they will keep using an app that shows them improvement. One thing you should keep in mind when thinking about creating an educational app is that you have a clear goal. Don't try to build a 
the massive platform at first. Pick a single skill or concept and make it engaging, like Duolingo did, and they're still teaching only languages. The third niche is health and wellness, and this is probably the largest long-term niche that you can choose. This includes fitness, nutrition, sleep, mental health, basically everything that helps people feel better in some way. Let's take Call AI as an example. In the last month, they generated over 2 million US dollars in the App Store revenue, and they are just helping people keeping track of their nutrition. It's clean, simple, and it works because it solves a personal, repeatable problem. The reason health apps work is because they are building habits and they are showing results. If an app helps someone to sleep better, managing stress, or even track their daily habits in some way, they will keep coming back. Once users start to feel a difference, the app becomes a part of their routine. So these three niches, utility, education, and health, they all fit into stuff that people are actually doing every day. People already clean their phones, learn new skills, or track health. The thing you need to understand is that your job isn't to convince people to care, it's to make the process simpler, faster, or more satisfying. The proof is in the numbers because every single example I showed you they are generating millions per month. And the thing is that these niches are popular, profitable and still accessible for indie devs that want to solve real problems. So pick one of these three niches and solve that problem people actually have and improve it over time. Anyways, make sure to ship fast, eat your veggies and don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button and see you in the next video.